Hello, hello, everybody. It's 1.19 a.m. Central Time on the 25th of February, 2023. It's Saturday morning here in the United States. Already the weekend internationally. Hope you're doing well. We're here to talk about seismic events. In case you don't know where you're at, you're looking at a representation of the planet showing the earthquakes from the USGS and EMSC out of Europe, Earthquake 3D. I don't get anything for recommending it, but you should probably use something like it just so you can see the earthquake spread out from multiple agencies. And what you'll start to see is a progression of earthquakes if you look long enough. And let me talk about what's going on over here. And we have a warning going over in Turkey for a potential another large earthquake in Turkey. Going for the next several days, there's a big amount of movement going on spreading from down next to Cyprus going all the way back over into Iraq, over here to the east and up to the north, back up into Turkey, of course. That Now, this is about 400 miles of an area that's moving all the way over to the west, over into central Turkey, and in the center is where our sevens broke. That was two and a half weeks ago that those sevens happened. Now, I'm going to open up a USGS map here, and we're going to go look up the USGS plate boundary map. I show this in almost every update that I do. The red lines between the plates. And if you're not aware, again, these are spots between plates where one plate meets up to the other. And the spot in Turkey that broke this surface fissure fracture that's happened, a crack in the ground formed from where the sevens were originally right here, <laughs> going all the way back up to the east by northeast. I'm not laughing at that. I'm just saying this is a big deal. And so, multiple earthquakes going across the area we're watching right down here at the Syria border for a potential another large earthquake up to near 7 range. So far, the area all around, it's breaking. Again, here's 100 kilometers and 100 mile key down in the lower left-hand corner. You can see we're going all the way down at Cyprus, all the way back up over into Turkey. So, what's going on here? A standing wave. And let me get, actually, I've got a graphic now that I can play for you. I, I didn't have it queued up here, really, but I think I could find it within just a matter of a minute or two. You know, uh, well, again, I'm I'm the king of never being prepared, right? Like, well, at least when it comes to doing my live broadcast. And there we go. Okay, let me get a display capture turned back on. Here is what I think is going on. Okay, see this? This is a concentric wave, and the wave focuses in on itself, and it can't compress down into the fluid of the water, and it therefore focuses into a singularity or a spike where the combined focus of the entire wave is focused in on a single point, and it hammers up. I want you to remember this because I think this is what is happening with all of our deep earthquakes that are raised high off the globe. There's a hammering action coming in on the underside of the plate, and then it spreads up, out, and away following these red lines, the plate boundaries. So we have something coming up on the underside, hitting on the underside, hundreds if not thousands of miles across coming up from deep down below in the magma, which is like a fluid, coming up through the asthenosphere, which is the semi-melted area, and then we get the quake right at the underside of the plate. But that's not where it stops. That's just where it starts. Then a wave spreads out, and I think the wave is a very low frequency wave. So imagine down here at the other end of the tank, that's where our deep earthquake is happening, and it's sending out a ripple out and away, and it goes down to the end of the tank, and it reflects back into itself. When it reflects back into itself, you see the wave pumps up in energy. It doesn't become disorganized in the tank. A standing wave forms. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to park my mouse over the tip of one of these waves. We're going to watch the middle point, the empty area, touch the middle of the mouse. Do you see that? I'm not moving my mouse. It's just wave peak, valley, peak, valley, or peak and trough, top and bottom, over and over again. And then when it reflects back into itself, that's where the middle point gets filled in next with a new peak of a wave. Now let me just quickly explain. I think we're seeing a stepping stone. I don't think. I know we're seeing a stepping stone path of the same sized earthquakes. 4.9, 5.0. 
another 4.9 and a 5.0 and so forth all the way around or spreading out and away this is one day's worth of earthquakes here's two days or three days let's get that on the screen here and you'll see it goes all the way around with the same size quakes within a hair of a point of each other but it starts with that hammering action coming up and then dropping off the earthquakes like this wave in a wave tank imagine each one of these is a 4.9 or a 5 and then it reflects back into itself and then all of a sudden we get 5.2 5.2 5.2 5.2 and then it reflects back into itself again and a new deep earthquake happens pumps more energy in and then all of a sudden we're at 5.5 5.5 5.5 5.5 .5. then it gets to a point where it gets blocked where the wave is spreading it's trying to get out and away from where the tension is being created and it gets to the next plate and that's where we get our new big break like at Tajikistan new 6.8 just broke there a day ago as the wave is spreading out and going this way now the wave is heading over towards Turkey where it previously got blocked and broke with two 7.0 earthquakes and the spacing on the quakes here going out over to the west and back over into Turkey and out over to the west and back into Turkey and out over the west it's happened three or four times in the last 14 days that we've gone over from Turkey over to South Europe back to Turkey over to South Europe back to Turkey and then finally release out to the mid-Atlantic Ridge what does that sound like it sounds like waves getting to the end of the tank reflecting back going to the end of the tank reflecting back and then finally breaking out and going over breaking out and going over what breaking out and going over across this the plate boundary again going up into Greece Italy Croatia then we get into the plate of Europe itself and we saw a spread of significant sized earthquakes go around the outside edge of Europe over this past week including Romania Croatia we we're watching for a flow to go up out and around I talked about watching Poland Poland got hit in case you missed it now everybody talking about this one or where is it Wow there it is a 3.8 struck over here at Wales 3.8 at Wales now you'll see they've downgraded it again since I started my update since I started my update they downgraded it from a 3.8 to a 3.4 in the past few minutes they knew I was gonna be talking about it so time to get it downgraded right boys it's a four a four in Wales they can take it down to 3.4 whatever we're gonna go put the coordinates in then we're gonna go over and check frack off and see how close we are to the fracking operations that were done here and then capped off here because of an environmental catastrophe that happened here or around here so we're at the Pendaren house the dragon's head Wow the old classic dragon's head let's go see if we've got this this is I saw this on a documentary I think that's this place pretty sure is it let's see yep sure is this is the one guys that's been resurfaced on the on the front but this thing's super old I want to say it's like one of the oldest Wow all right I'm not saying it's related I'm just saying we got an earthquake right next to it now what we would want to start to look for at these spots are old bastion forts and those sorts of things just like we're looking around for the rest of the planet now when I say bastion fort I really should say bastion mountains because that's really what we'd be looking for and I'm not gonna look for it now but we do have to keep an eye out for that I don't see anything right off the bat that stands out but then again we might not be looking at it in the proper direction but that being said let's go look out at frack off frack off UK let's go check their map they have an interactive map and what we want to do is come into Wales just and see so let's see wait where's the here's the interactive map now to operate it oh wow look won't load Google Maps correctly I have to put my microphone phone down really quick press control all right here's Wales okay uh, there's Wales I just want to compare to where the earthquakes being reported okay it's down here in South Wales let's go get the USGS site open on this quake oh, by the way USGS is reporting an under 4.0 quake you notice that 
So here's the town of Cardiff as a point of reference. Let's see where this is on the map. There's Swansea. There's Newport. There's Carmenthen. Wait, why am I not seeing Cardiff on here? Maybe it's just not marked on this map or it's further. Oh, there's Cardiff right there. So Cardiff is there. And the earthquake is, one more time, north by northeast of Cardiff, up here along the river. So north by northeast of Cardiff, up here. Now they have fracking operations listed over to the west, but that's far enough away, I would think, it's not directly related. But these, I think, this takes into account the current, right? This is your current operations. I don't think it covers all your past operations. Now, I can tell you for certain, the area in Wales, all of this going up to the north, that they were doing exploratory drilling and all kind. Of, there was a big stink about it. And I mean big stink. Now, this map might not also be accurate anymore since it looks like it's not working properly. Anyway, had to go check. It is close, but it's not close enough to have current operations marked there. So would I rule out fracking unless there's exploratory wells that are drilled there? I'll say we'll rule out fracking unless there's exploratory wells nearby or this is an old drill point. What's the other locations nearby? Do we know anything else in the area? Does anybody know of anything else in the area? If you're in the chat room, you can leave that comment and I will probably see that back at some point. Looking back in on the area though, when I see a quake in Wales, I have to go look for the fracking first, just because. What else do we have going on here? What is this? A mine? Wait, those are pipelines. Those are all pipelines. Wait a second, what's going on here? What is that? These are natural gas pipelines, I think. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, they are. Look at that. Dang. Wow. Okay, well, you've got a boatload of natural gas pipelines coming through the area. That means natural gas is being extracted from somewhere nearby. And they collect it and then put it together. Uh, again, they'll, they'll put that in the pipeline and go process it. From fracking, I mean. From oil and gas production. No kidding. Well, where's it coming from? Do we have a refinery around here somewhere? Do we... Anybody want to tell me about a British refinery that's going through the area? They're quarrying the heck out of this place up on the top. Look at that. Yeah, nothing to worry about there. Wow. All right. So now we do have a pipeline right next to it. Right next to the pipeline. Makes me wonder, are there, are there fracking ops nearby that I need to know about? Some that I'm just missing somehow. I mean, it's not like they look like the ones over in the United States. So we don't get the big widespread multiple pads in the middle of nowhere. But we do have a bunch of pads out here. They look blank. I wonder if these are the old pads that they, with the fracking being cut out there because of such a stink. I wonder if that's it. I wonder if th that looks like what you would see. This right here looks like just like what you would see. But they just don't have any wells on them now. That's what it looks like. Right there. Oh, man, I hate having to guess. Let's go zoom and see if we have any others. Right? Okay, we start getting this kind of stuff going up through the mountains. This is a wind farm. Here's a wind farm. With pads for a wind farm. United States, we get the wind farm and the drill points right next to each other side by side. They'll even do them in the same lots. They're zoned for clean energy and gas and oil, I guess, as a tax write-off in the United States. So why am I taking the time to do this? Look where the arrow is. I have to determine whether or not there's a drill point there or not. So I'm doing the best I can live for you to see how we do it. But look where it goes. It goes right out to Iceland. Iceland just got hit. And they put out that warning for Askja, A-S-K-J-A Volcano. A volcano that hasn't gone in a long time, but it started to show activity about a year ago. And within the past week or two at the most, the entire top of the volcano melted off. 
or it's bare and it's steaming the lake inside is now steaming and they made note of that the media did and they talked about it's going to erupt soon but not imminent whatever that means now i can tell you an earthquake has just struck right next to it the Bartabunga volcano is where the 5.1 is right next to Askia. to get a new quake down in wales we talked about watching whales in my last week's update last week i brought up whales in particular and the arrow on the back side and said only when a big push is coming across europe do we see the english channel wales scotland and then the push goes out to iceland only when the wave that i've been talking about here travels through the plate usually it goes around the plate around the outside edge but in this case it's actually going through the plate straight out of italy straight out of croatia like a ramp jumping off up into north france uk following the arrow path of least resistance right out around the edges of each country in this case but the countries to find on the edges of the craton so let's recap new deep earthquakes coming up on the underside of the plate hammering in like i showed you here hammering in on the underside of the plate the combined force of a very low frequency wave in the magma thousands of miles across focusing in onto a fine point and creaming the underside of the plate then hammering in multiple times with new deep earthquakes like pushing into a wave tank that's containing the wave which then goes down to a point and reflects back into itself and starts to build in magnitude and all of a sudden we go from fours to fives to sixes to sevens and so forth the middle points between each wave getting hit as the wave spreads out following the wave tank which are the red lines that I've been showing you here from the USGS map and then you'll start to see it you really will and the professionals do their best to try and obscure this I think maybe I, I know it seems nefarious but it sure seems like they're trying to hide it so going across areas you will see the equidistant spacing of the quakes all the same size within a hair of a point of each other so like for instance 4.9 5.0 4.9 5.0 4.9 5.0 or 4.6 4.5 4.6 4.5 4.6 4.5 what does that sound like 4.6 4.5 4.6 4.5 they're within a hair of a point of each other and as they reflect into each other we go from 4.6 and 4.5 up to 5.0 and 5.5 and then a final break happens in an area and that allows the wave to escape out of the tank and carry on and go over to the west in this case we got a big wave coming out big wave coming out of what the big wave tank the indo-australian plate boundary india australia indo-australian plate down below it that's where the wave's coming up and then it spreads up to the north and look what we've got the semi equidistant spacing across an uneven tank of the same size quakes going up here from philippines up here to guam up here to japan up here to kamchatka this is the usgs map showing it in one day's time but this wave spacing if this is a peak here at philippines and this or indonesia and this is a wave peak at guam and this is a wave peak at japan and this is a wave peak at russia what's the spacing on that it's like a thousand fifteen hundred miles almost two thousand miles apart so what kind of wave has a peak that's 2,000 miles apart? How about ultra low frequency, extremely low frequency? A step below very low frequency. But it is. It really is. It's like 2,000 miles apart, you got very low frequency. Or I'm sorry, ultra low frequency. Then you get into a plate. Once the wave gets absorbed into a plate, it takes a step up in frequency. We go from really, really low and 2,000 miles apart to somewhat higher at 200 miles apart and then we focus in on the middle and the middle is what where the wave focuses and reflects back into itself and boom we get a new break at the end of the tank and then the wave comes out usually breaks out and flows out and away even further and it spreads out across a plate tries to equalize across a whole mass and then it gets out to the tail end and we get a new break out on the mid-atlantic ridge ultimately 
we should see a new big earthquake out on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge that's rare. Also going up to near 7 by next week. But I'm, I'm getting way ahead of myself. We, we haven't even seen the new break at Turkey yet. Tajikistan broke. Next stop, Turkey. Then across Europe. Then the Mid-Atlantic. Ultimately, that shift that happened in Turkey, the big shift, the new plate boundary that's broken and the plate boundary that's the crack and all that that's happened to the ground, ultimately, you're going to see Europe compensate. You will see it ultimately break out here. And it won't take long. It won't take years or even months. Usually, it takes a couple of weeks. Once a shift starts happening like this, it takes a while for it to stop. And that's why we're watching for a new break to come in. We got a new push coming in now into the area where there's a focus. I hope I hope this explains it. Again, standing wave thing. This video should really help. Again, imagine each peak as like a new earthquake. And it goes forward. And what happens? The peak fills in the next valley. It's like a game of leapfrog. So we would look for the new earthquakes to break at the open point, at the middle of the open point, when it reflects back into itself. You would look for the wave to go back in and come back up here. Boom. 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 Same spot. And it'll hit there until it breaks out. And it, obviously in the tank here, we're reflecting back in. There's no breakout point at the end of this tank because it's a closed laboratory tank. This one connects from plate to plate to plate. And plates absorb the energy. Now let's show you the rest of the planet. Now that you understand how the process works, we can go over and look at the rest of the earthquakes. It looks like a jumbled mess across uh, Central America. But now that you understand we're talking about a wave going across something, you see mid-range fours over here, and you'll see mid-range fours over here. Same size. Down to a point of each other. 4.4, 4.1, 4.3. Add them together, it equals 4.5. 4.3, 4.2, and another 4.2 equals 4.5. If you add them together, magnitude-wise. Literally, just plus, 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 add them together, equals 4.5. And then what happens over to the east? 4.5. And it's like a line of quakes connecting between them. But to see the line, we have to look across this, the USGS map, one more time. Coming from the coast of Central America, going over, following over this way. This is the tank in this case. And we have the earthquakes clustered on the coast of Mexico and Central America. And then we go over to the east. And the combined total of all this mess here is 4.5, two 4.5s. And another 4.5 over here. It means this whole thing is being saturated with a wave equal 4.5. And it's reflecting back into itself now. It's going to take the next step up. And so we find the halfway points between our current sets of earthquakes for the new earthquake to strike. And in this case, when you get a whole bunch of overlapping rings, a whole bunch of waves, and you just look at the center of all where the waves are overlapping, it means Puerto Rico is about to get hit again. And it's going to be bigger than 4.5. Coming across the giant Pacific wave tank, we have a 5.0 heading over towards where the arrow points, and notice it's right in the middle of the arrow. Now, down to the south, just a couple days ago, there it is. So really, we came across with two fives in the past three days, one to the south, one to the north. The one to the south went to the south, and we got 5.1, 5.0, and so forth down to the south. In the middle, we got a 5.3, just like what was coming in. 5.3 incoming wave, 5.3 here, 5.3's worth of energy down here. Add these together, again, it equals 5.3. In the middle, we have a le legit, literal 5.3. And incoming, we have a 5.3. So what happened? A wave equal to 5.3 came across the Pacific, came across from over here, and went down this way. And you can trace it back to where the push came up where the hammering action first started, where the concentric waves first came in on the underside of the plate and hammered in. One more time, take a look at the screen. Boom, hammers into the underside of the plate. Here. And then it spreads out equally over to here, to the east, spreads out equally over to this red line. And it goes to the north, to the south, straight into the middle where displacement then goes around the outside edge to the north and around the outside edge to the south and that's the way the seismic wave flows
Okay, doki. Now let's go into the United States. Hawaii. Alaska. So multiple fives striking across from Kamchatka into Alaska. 5.4 striking off the coast of Alaska. So this is far south of where I issued my warning. It's spot on for the magnitude, but far, far due south. I warned in the bay or, well, the bay, in the basin east by northeast of Anchorage here, and it's dead, the earthquake, like I said, hit down south way far. I'm way off on that. I'm spot on on magnitude, spot on on the last day of the warning, but whatever, got the location wrong in Alaska. I mean, again, if I'm trying to get down to a region, I guess I got it, but I want to get it down to 200 miles. So I consider that a location miss. But that is the quake we're looking for. I'm j I was off seven days ago where I was looking. Again, I was looking up here. And instead, it hits down here. I mean, that's huge. That's 51, 52, 250. That's three or 400 miles off. I'm trying to get it, keep it within 200 miles. Anyway. The quake came in on the plate boundary, which means it's sticking to the plate boundary, which means it's going to be going down into the Juan de Fuca, where it's going to probably be get hidden, and we won't get a report of a five off the coast out there. What, are you kidding me? Anyway, fives are coming across. It's pretty obvious. Five over in Russia today. Five over here at Alaska two days ago. Connected by 4.9. At least one. 4.9. Now, down to Hawaii, we are down to the last day of the watch for Hawaii. And if it doesn't hit by tomorrow, I cancel the watch and the warning. We're at threes now. Threes. We've crept up to threes around the island. But I'm looking, I was looking for up to mid-range five, maybe even bigger. I was looking for up to 5.5 .5 to 5.9. So this could be a strikeout for me on Hawaii. It would be the first strikeout on Hawaii in a long time for me. But I was looking for Hawaii to go because of that storm. I... Probably shouldn't have done that. But anyway, I don't normally forecast based on storms. It was just dumping a ton of rain on Hawaii over and over and over again. Low pressure system off to the side. And I thought that's going to mean that instead of breaking up at Camp Chet, this is me six days ago. Instead of breaking up here, looks like it's going to come down, break into Hawaii. And then what happens? It breaks up here. But then again, I was basing it on the freaking water weight earthquakes and the volcanoes, whatever. i glad I said that. But it's a strikeout for me right now, at least until tomorrow. If it doesn't hit by tomorrow, then it is a full strikeout for me. Looks like it's breaking up to the north and staying to the north. Staying on the plate boundary, just like I said, over in Alaska. Let's go into the continental United States. Talk about this. How about the New Hampshire-Vermont border? Vermont! Vermont, you got your people's earthquake. You literally got two or three of them now. Yeah, enough to go around for everybody. Take a look. Twos and 3.8 struck up in Quebec. You don't see that on the feed here anymore. USGS literally omitted that quake. While the USGS is carrying a 3.4, over here in the UK, the USGS omitted and ignored on purpose a 3.8 that just struck here two days ago. Why? I should have warning for it. That's why. I warned the New York-Quebec border for up to a 4 and a 3.8 struck two days ago. USGS deliberately ignored the quake. You can go check the Quebec, uh, the, oh, I'm sorry, the Canadian agency. You can go check the European agency. They all got the quake still. It's just not on the feeds here anymore because the USGS doesn't have it. European feed's only 50 earthquakes long, so if you don't catch it on the time where it strikes or within a few hours, it falls off and gets replaced by a new quake on the European feed. So, in other words, USGS omitting a quake where I issued a warning, and it was significant, of near 4 right at the can Canada border. While they're reporting the 3.4 a world away over in the UK. So funny. So obvious they're doing that, right? Like they're omitting quakes that show you that there's a spread going across the plate. Now, why did I warn... Here, the Vermont-New Hampshire border region. Well, let me open up this. The Craton graphic. Look at the northeast. It goes right up to the edge of the Craton, uh, up to Vermont and New Hampshire, up to the northeast. Now, the earthquakes we are expecting to go down through the south and up to the north, following the edge of the Craton. And that's exactly what's happened this week so far. We're waiting for Oklahoma to break with a new near 5.0 earthquake 
Colorado just got hit today. Check Colorado off the list if you're keeping track of areas that we named. And check Vermont, New Hampshire off the list if you were keeping track of areas that we named. Now, this should just look at it one more time. Look at the earthquakes going down through Texas and up the East Coast. That matches. Now, over on the West Coast, look at the Craton again. And let me get the last several days worth of earthquakes turned on here. First of all, here's the fours. Notice, up in the Northwest and down in Texas. Here's the threes. Notice, clustered across the West Coast, reaching over to the edge of the Craton down to twos fills in the halfway points in between the threes perfectly makes a stepping stone path standing wave going across the craton once we get the twos and ones in there and let's wait for the feed to finally refresh there we are and it kind of looks like a jumbled mess but you should be able to make out the deformed edge of the craton the purple part the accretionary belt or plain coastal plain going out to the ocean over to the west coast and then you see it the line of quakes going across Texas, going over to the New Madrid and up the East Coast. It's a slam dunk. It's a perfect match, and it's every week this way. This is, again, one of my biggest discoveries that there's a flow of earthquakes going across the Craton. Why does this matter? Because once you understand there's a flow of something, then you understand something's flowing. Right? <laughs> Mr. Spock says, once you understand something's flowing, then you know something's flowing. Mr. Spock becomes a hippie and tells you the truth in a way you can understand it. Now, let's go down and look into Southern Colorado. Why did we warn Southern Colorado? Well, look at Colorado on the Craton map. Look at it out here to the west. Do you see it? Okay, it's pretty obvious. There it is, right on the edge of the Craton. We're going to put the coordinates in from Western Colorado and see what resides at the earthquake epicenter. Now, I'm already going to tell you, what we were looking for in Wales, the drill points, exist in southern Colorado right here by the hundreds, if not thousands. So you remember those little pads I was showing you in the mountains around Wales that I thought might be drill points? These all are. Okay. So you got the cleared pad in the mountains. They got the drill point. You got the pumps. And look how many there are. Every single one of these is a different drill point. It's not forestry clear cut. These are all for oil and gas. This is Southern Colorado going down into New Mexico. We'll turn on our borders and labels just so you can see it. That's the New Mexico side of the border. And this is the Colorado side of the border. Here's Colorado with all theirs. And we go right across the border down to the south. And here's New Mexico's. So it just carries on, guys. This whole thing is drilled from up here all the way to down here. All of this is drilled. Again, look where we are. All of that is drilled. Why does that matter? One more time. Take a look at the screen. Whoopsie. Take a look. Wake up. Get over here. Babality. All right. All my Zoomer, my Zoomer audience has no idea what I'm talking about right now. This old boomer knows what he's doing, guys. I'm gonna get on my, I'm gonna get drink my monster and drive over to your house on Saturday morning and do some mowing lawn mowing outside and wake your Zoomer ass up. Take those ear pods out of your ear. Get off your damn hoverboard and listen up, you damn Zoomer. This is a boomer talking to you. Going down to the south from the drill points to the drill points. We go down to Texas where Texas was struck. We'll get the biggest earthquake of the bunch, the 4.0. Go put it in. Show you what's deep in the heart of Texas at White City, New Mexico. <laughs> deep in the heart of New Mexico. Right? Is that how you sing it? The stars at night are big and bright deep in the heart of New Mexico no why is the USGS listing this earthquake in Texas as being in New Mexico well look how far inside the border of deck maybe they just don't have any talent they're not civilized down there they don't have any you know they're living in little shacks in the middle of nowhere out there oh no wait we got some towns right here 
We got a town right here. Take a look. Orla, Texas. But now wait, why are we triangulating from White City, New Mexico? Why are we listing the Texas quake as New Mexico? Isn't that suspicious? I wonder if it has anything to do with the multi-billion dollar pumping operation right next to it. Ah, nah. Nah. The oil company doesn't control the, oil, the earthquake information? Huh? Hey guys, take a look at all this drilling they got going on here. Look at all these little dots. You know, I used to show this a long time ago, back in like 2011, before Google had updated imagery. People tried to tell me these were the houses. They're like, that's not pumping, Dutch. They don't do it like that. Those are houses. You're just trying to scare people. And I'm like, what? Houses? You shit me? Now we've got the updated flyovers. You can see right down to the finest point. Houses. Dude, people in their denials back in the day. And, and look, I mean, when you get this many drill points and you've got this much drilling going on on the edge of the Kraton, I just have to say it, that Kraton is something... I, I, I'm glad that it's something I discovered first, that there's a flow of earthquakes going around our Kraton because guess what? It applies worldwide. The earthquakes are going around the European Kraton. That's why Romania got hit, Poland got hit, and now... We're going out across the middle of the plate following the weakest path of re least resistance, if I could say it proper, which is mid-range to upper three to four, going across Wales. But really, it's just a symptom of the greater problem of the wave that's going across the plates. Let's go back to the USGS map now. So back over here to the red-lined map, that wave that I was showing you. Hammering in from down below the plates, spreads out, following the plate boundaries, following the red lines. And guess what happens? It goes over, up through Japan, following the path of earthquakes that I've just been talking about for the last hour. And we go up into and bend down into the United States on this side. We're the last to get the flow, usually. Going around the plate this way. The flow goes over to South America. I've already talked about that. The flow goes over to Europe. I've already talked about that. The flow goes up to Alaska. Already talked about that. The last spot for the wave to reach is over, around, and to the other side of the plate where we are. Which then goes into the Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone. This jagged sawtooth edge shaped fracture zone here. Well, really, those jagged teeth of that plate really belong to the Pacific Plate. But anyway, the flow comes in from the north. And once we get out here, there's seismic hush-hush going on. As in, don't report the quakes. National security stuff. Butt hurt feelings from professionals. A whole grip of stuff going on that prevents the reporting of earthquakes out in the ocean unless you complain or it looks suspicious and there aren't any. And they just throw a few on there. Anyway, let, when was the last time a six or something got reported out there? Just name me the time. I mean, it's like been months or years or something. So we won't likely see the quake get reported out in the ocean is what I'm getting at. But we'll see a new five or something strike out there. Then that will be followed by new activity across California that's significant up north. Northern California should get hit in the next few days by a significant five-plus earthquake coming in on the south side of the Juan de Fuca. So even if they don't show us the quake out here in the ocean, you can expect coming in here on land where they can't hide it, we'll get the quake coming in right down here at the south tip going down towards the Bay Area. And I'll have to warn everybody from Eureka down to the Star Fort in the Bay Area that I found where the last earthquake struck. Do you guys know about that? You want to see it? Here, let me show you. I'm serious. This is not, not a joke. 5.0 earthquake struck here in the Bay Area uh, a few months ago. And I zoomed in on it and I was like, what, what, what do we got going on here? And... Wait. There we go. 5.0 comes in. They downgraded it to 4.1, by the way. But I zoom in on this, and I see a satellite array here. I'm like, wow, satellite array. Right below where the earthquake, the earthquake's right below there. And then I see this. I'm like, what's that? It's a trash dump. It's a recycling center. But then I backed it out, and I saw it. I'm like, wait a second. Hold on. One, two, three, four. 
It's a Star Fort Bastion Fort that's got a satellite array built in the middle of it now with a trash dump. And that's not paradelia. This is, I measured it. It's perfect down to the foot. It's been converted or lost over time, but look how big it is. It's hundreds and hundreds of feet high. When you look at it that way, it's kind of hard to see because they took out one side of it down here. But it's there. It really is. The only reason I even found this is because the earthquake struck below it. I was like, wow. And, and of course, come on. This is in the middle of it. It can't be chance. Satellite array in the middle of it. Earthquake down below it. Shaped like a star fort. Trash dump put in the middle of it. I don't know. We got weird stuff going on. So I have to show that kind of stuff to you because it's real. And with the Star Fort stuff, I know it sounds preposterous, but apparently these ancient structures have earthquakes happening below them. That's what's drawing my eye to them. I would have never found them otherwise. So back to the start of this broadcast. Where are the deep earthquakes coming from? Well, they're coming from where our letter D's are. You see our letter D's, but look down below the letter D or look on the side of it. Looks like a big arrow shape, doesn't it? See that? The Indo-Australian plate edge itself is making up. We're getting big, deep earthquake activity down below the tips of these plates. And in this case, that's the shape of the plate right there as well. But the deep earthquakes are where we see the whole thing start. If there's one thing I want you to take away from this broadcast in particular, it's that this right here is most likely happening over hundreds, if not thousands of miles, down below the West Pacific and everywhere else where we're getting our deep earthquakes. When this happens, when a very low frequency or ultra low frequency in the magma focuses in on itself on the underside of the plate like a wave, I would imagine it like a physical shock wave, that it hammers in and up. And once you start something in motion like this, the energy transfers from point to point to point to point to point until it's dissipated. And in this case, the hammering is big enough and it's widespread enough that it's coming up down below, for instance, the whole Indo-Australian plate. It then displaces the adjacent plates out and away, and you get this standing wave that's, again, you have to be almost a planet away to see it, 2,000 miles apart on the wave. This is on the USGF site. This is in a day. This means the whole West Pacific moved in a day on the same basis within a hair of a magnitude of one another, a hair of a point of a magnitude across a vast distance following a giant wave tank. And Mother Nature's wave tanks are the plates. So what kind of wave is it containing? Well, I'm going to have to stand by the whole VLF thing to ultra low frequency thing. And I might even have a bookmark of something to show you. Let's see if I even have the bookmark. It might have been on my other computer, unfortunately. No, I got it. Let me show you something I found a few years ago. And I really didn't bring this up till recently. I found this a few years ago, and this is old. This is from VLF.IT, which is, I guess, over in Italy. But, I mean, look at the setup the guy's using. This is from, I guess, the late 90s, early 2000s. This guy built this, a VLF antenna, and he put it up just like this. And he was using it to detect VLF signals, and he wasn't expecting to pick up things down in the ground. But what he did was he actually detected intermittent regular spaced intervals of some kind of electric VLF in the ground. He thought it was first from the power lines, as he says in this article that he wrote here back in the day. And he figured out it was not from them and that it came in waves and he didn't know where it was coming from. And that it was a series of signals and he tells what the spacing was and uh, 16 hertz. We're talking low frequency. Now, I think he, what he's picking up here is the wave passing through his area, wherever this is. Let's see. Does he tell us where it is, I guess? Um, he's talking about Schumann residence. 
I mean, obviously, we're going to be talking about it in Italy, right? I don't see a location. I don't see a location listed on here. I might be missing it. He gives directions how to build it, in case you want to repeat everything. And fine, here's his conclusion. Finally, the question remains, who on earth is practicing communication? He thinks it's communication because it's equal, equal distantly spaced. Practicing communication via such low frequency signals through the blades and uses the earth as a wire. This is what he thinks. That somebody's communicating with VLF somehow, and that's the equal spacing on the signal that he's getting. But I propose to you that the signal that he's getting is an electromagnetic VLF through the plates, and that the equal spacing, whether it's higher frequency or lower frequency, let's go back to his post here, whether these are further spaced apart or not, the closer together they are, like this, is higher frequency. See the spacing? So think of the, each one of these as a wave. Make sure you can see this. Each one of these little guys as a wave. And this one, each one of these as a wave. But this one's bigger spaced. This would be very lower frequency. And he called them noise pulses with sinusoidal components, including a signal of a type 2 in the left part. That people, he's saying people are communicating using it through the plates. That somebody's communicating through the plates using this. That's what he's saying. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you should be able to put these in the ground fully and pick up this electromagnetic current that I'm talking about, the VLF current, that you should be able to pick up this electromagnetically in the plate using something like this placed fully in the ground. Put the VLF antenna in the ground. And it, it, this is just for listening. We're not talking about transmitting, so we don't need a multi-mile wide VLF antenna. You could do the coil and so forth and put it into the ground. And you'd start listening for this to see if this arrives first. Which one? Which one do I want to look at? The one with the equal di spaced waves. See if this arrives first before a quake hits. And if this picks up and starts to space out or tighten up, and if it starts to tighten up, it reflects back into itself. Let me put it this way. This wave goes down, reflects off something, comes back, and it cuts itself in half. And it becomes 16th notes instead of eighths. We go eighth, 16th, 30 seconds, and we pick up in frequency. And then, bing, as we pick up in frequency, right in the middle of it, we get the spike. We get the quake. Hey, look in the middle of each. Hey, hold on, hold on. In the middle of each one of his things here. We have a spike. Look at that. See that little line that comes up at the center? At each end and in the middle. Each end and in the middle. Each end. This one doesn't have it in the middle. But this one does, this one does, and this one does. Wow. I never noticed that till now. I've looked at this for several years, too. So, showing this off now, we've got something that you could actually build if you're into electronics. And if you're into seismology, let's say you're a professor or a student or a class or something, why not make one of these and put it in the ground see what you pick up? Couldn't hurt. Worst thing that could happen is you pick up top secret communications from the military will get you in trouble. Eh, it's the worst thing that could happen. Eh, I don't know. Humvee pulls up outside, guys in camos get out, come down your driveway, knock on your door, you pretend like you're not there. They have some device that can see through your walls and they know you're there. They start knocking more and finally you have to come out and talk to them. They tell you to shut up or they're going to kill you. I don't know. Stuff like that could happen. Ah, it could never happen. Stuff like that would never, ever happen. Our government's totally proper. Always looks out for us. Never has a problem with the truth. And always looks out for our best interests. I'll tell you what, man. It's great living here in freaking Ward Cleaver's America. All right. Are we done? Do you guys have an earthquake plan? One more time. Turkey's on watch for a 7.0 quake to strike this week. The frequency, the number of earthquakes, is increasing. Obviously, we're going back up in the number of fours. And uh, we're going to be going back up, I think, by a full magnitude and a half, we're going to go from 
up to upper six, low seven is where I'm looking. I hope I'm wrong. I'm, I hope I'm wrong about the rest of the forecast. That upper fives are going to come back into Central Europe and South Europe. That the Adriatic and Central Italy are going to get hit again. And that Romania is going to get hit again over in the Eastern Romania this time. I hope I'm wrong. And if I am wrong, I get back on and I beat myself up about it. But I'd rather be wrong and just have nothing hit than have you guys have a big earthquake. But I don't think I'm wrong, guys. We're, we're on. It's spreading out. We're getting new deep earthquakes. We have that solar storm that arrived. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. The earthquake plan thing is probably all you could do. You could know what to do when an earthquake strikes. Take shelter. Or if you're overseas... They tell you to go outside. Going outside is going to be hard. Especially if you're on second story, third story, fourth story. You won't be able to get out in time. So I would take shelter underneath a table or a desk. But if you're in a stone stacked structure. Like over in Turkey. With those concrete buildings and those cinder block buildings. Any multi-story cinder block building is going to be a hard thing to get out of in an earthquake. And if it collapses... Being under a desk isn't going to help. I don't know what to tell you. We need to reinforce and buttress up every single brick and stone stack structure in the Mideast and across Europe and the United States. I have an idea for an invention, but it's completely separate from this. But you know what buttresses are, right? Okay. Anyway, eh, we just need to have our surroundings known by ourselves so that we don't have to rely on someone else's construction withstanding the quake you can know where to go you can know what to do when an earthquake strikes or when other disasters happen i mean when a fire happens you know you're supposed to exit the building and go to a certain spot you prearrange. same would go for an earthquake if you are getting displaced outside you have a pre-arranged spot you go to that's free from falling debris safe for you to be at if in case there's any other aftershocks outside Things can fall from much further up than inside. If you're sleeping, I want you to look around your room, guys. Do you have anything by your bed that could fall on you while you're asleep? I know a lot of people haven't thought about this stuff. Things that can fall on you while you're asleep or fall in the way of the door. Do you have things next to your door that they could sway or fall over and all of a sudden you, you have to move a cabinet or a armoire or a dresser that's fallen over in front of the door? Think about that. So make sure your home is secure. And then finally, this is something everybody can do. Emergency kit. You need an emergency kit. Do it. You can have a change of clothes, a set of shoes, extra set of keys, extra ID, flashlight and batteries, food and water. Blah, 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 Just have the frickin' plan. And know what to do, please. I'm so getting freaking annoyed by having to tell everybody this and nobody does it. I see all these disasters and everybody's walking around with dusty faces and no emergency kits. And if you have one by the side of the door, you can grab it easily. And it will have some things in it that you need. First aid and sanitation. A form of communication. Flashlight and batteries in case it's nighttime or you get stuck without power for more than a day. Food. Should be prepackaged, easy, lightweight. You know, granola bars, fruit roll-ups, stuff that's high energy, high sugar, high protein. I'm just giving you ideas. But please do it finally. In the next disaster, whenever that is, I want to see a bunch of people with freaking backpacks on. Little bags they're carrying around. They've got all the stuff in it. They're sitting there drinking water and wiping their faces off with the wet wipes they've got in there. I just, I want to see something good finally after a disaster where people have prepared and the majority of the people are like, I was able to grab my bug out bag. It was by the door. We were prepared. We had our emergency kit finally. Anyway, you know how people are. They never prepare until it's too late. The emergency kit will come in handy for other things. Like, like I said, for fires or evacuations or floods or earthquakes as well all right enough talk let's go ahead and save this we'll get this out over on youtube in just a few and this update kind of did sidetrack a little bit but not too far i stand by all my discovery oh 
Hey, speaking of discoveries, this would be a good way to send everybody off. I'm going to be making another video, a detailed video, where I show you something I discovered down in southern Florida. Two things I discovered, of course, but the big thing was the city. I already made a video on that. Found a city submerged down in Florida uh, in the shape of a giant spider web. Okay. But anyway, uh, I found a geoglyph, a thing in the ground that's 3,000 feet long in the shape of a iguana down in South Florida next to Key West, west of Key West, out in the nature preserve. And the island itself actually has a peculiar shape to it that I think many of my viewers will recognize that this shape here is something we've seen before. But what I want to show you, we're not doing paradelia or anything. We're not seeing faces in the rocks this time or any time. This has been carved out of the coral itself. It's got a spear going into the neck of this thing. And the hump on the back is a telltale giveaway. In case you don't know, let's just go open up. I've got my Twitter where I have screenshots posted of a side-by-side -side comparison of an iguana and this thing. So let's show that to you really quick. Here we go. So, iguanas with the lump off the back of their head like that and the head out in front of it. This is like some kind of hooked spear. And either that's an eel or a snake. But this has been carved out. This is not a natural thing. This has been carved out. The whole bay is actually has, looks like it's been at some point in the long distant past this thing. Uh, the channels that come in, you can't see it on this screenshot. I could take you over on uh, here and show it to you that the channels coming into this bay have been scraped out a long time ago. That's not natural right there. I'll show you other examples, like right here. Again, these were scraped out a long time ago, and it wasn't done with dredging material dred because it's a foot deep. This is one foot deep, and there are some spots where the dredging is really, really old, and it comes in along here, for instance. You see that? It's like a few feet deep. Anyway, this thing is an iguana with the hump on its back with some kind of spear hook thing that's been carved in here and this is ancient now here's the deal iguanas were not in the florida keys until the 1820s 1825 is when we're told iguanas first made their appearance in the florida keys by a shipwreck apparently there's stories online saying they didn't appear till the 1960s that's bogus 1960s is when they declared them an invasive species in Florida. But the actual story is they arrived in 1825. Well, here's the deal. The Central American peoples, the Native Americans and Native Central Americans, across Mexico, Central America, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Haiti, and Northern South America, this is where iguanas come from. Okay, they come from, and in the Caribbean. This is the Caribbean here. And the empires that spanned here, we know, were spanning this whole area all the way up into Arizona up here and into the South United States, mainland. That's where the ancient empires used to span to, and they, there's already evidence of that. That's not me saying this. This is already well established. Anyway, right here is the island. So, Indigenous peoples from a long time ago came here to this, well, diamond-shaped, <laughs> diamond-shaped island. And they came here and built or carved this into the coral. 3,000 feet long this is. This is 3,000 feet long. Let me get out my line measurement tool. It's over a half mile long from the back of the tail out to the tip of the spear that's piercing the neck of this thing and one more time it really is an iguana with the lump on the back of its head like that coming out into the front lump on the back of its head coming out to the front two legs tail and these things swim through the ocean in central america off the coast of mexico so what does it mean it would mean a empire that came from mexico either mayan incan or other spanned up into the keys a long time ago and carved this a long time ago along with the shape of the island which cannot be overlooked 
The shape of that island cannot be overlooked at all. Uh, let me see if I... Oh, I don't have the picture open anymore. Dang it. Okay, I don't have the picture open anymore of the St. Louis Star Fort. But this shape is showing up everywhere around the world. This particular shape. And it's not natural. The shape of the island. So I'm going to be making a full video on this. I'll spend a good 45 minutes to an hour. We're going to go follow this. This is an arrow and it points somewhere, by the way. That arrow points somewhere. I'll give you a hint. It points down to here. Exactly. To the closest point of Mexico's tip at Cancun and Tulum, where all the pyramids are. That's where that island points exactly. I already measured. I'm going to show all that to you in a video later. That's just a teaser. A way to end this broadcast to get you thinking about what is and what is not. So I'd like to say one thing about that shape down in the Keys there, the giant geoglyph in the shape of an iguana. People said that I must just be seeing things and that it must be a natural shape. But then I zoomed in and found the scrape marks. People said, oh, it can't be an iguana. Iguanas weren't in the United States till the 1960s. I looked it up and it's from the 1825s is when they say it first came here. But it's not from the 1820s, that geoglyph. So the only people who could have carved it were from an area where there were iguanas swimming in the ocean. And that would be off the coast of Central and South America. And that fits with the ancient empires that used to come up this way. The big deal is, is that I found it. And I think some people don't want me to get credit for making big finds like this because it's undiscovered. Nobody knows about it until I found it yesterday. Now that we all know, I don't think it's that big of a deal, is it? An iguana-shaped geoglyph from thousands of years ago from an empire that had iguanas that spanned the area in question? Would it really be that far of a jump to say it wasn't? I think it's really weird to try and say it's natural when it's got scrape and carve marks out of it. That's weird. So, anyway. All right, guys. Much love. Full video on this topic forthcoming at another time when we can really get into it. Don't want to mix the topics too hard. But it is a good way to end the broadcast on a, on a more slightly positive, more intriguing note to think about ancient structures that are thousands of feet long buried in or submerged in the ocean that have been missed by everybody just due to ignorance and not looking really all right, much love, everybody. Peace out.